Hello everyone, this is Robert, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the GWIC Cloud. I've had some time to spend with it, so I think it's time to kind of give my final thoughts and impressions and, you know, give you some little tips and tricks I've learned along the way so that you can make the most informed purchasing decision. Feel free to use the chapters to skip around, and let's get started. Okay, so let's start with Lightburn. I don't think it's been a secret throughout the series of these videos that I do not like the software that comes with the GWIC. It's serviceable. It will work and you can do some basic tasks, but it's not up to the level of something like Lightburn. I already have a license for it, so that's what I'm using. There are a couple little tips and tricks in setting this machine up for Lightburn. Um, I have a tutorial down below that kind of goes through the basics of it, but there's a couple things that you're gonna want to pay attention to. First off, the camera on this machine is completely separate. There's basically two USB jacks on the back. One of them is for you know the machine control, and the other one is for the camera. So you basically hook that up separate, and that kind of acts as um, essentially a webcam, and then you can set that up through Lightburn. You can go through and set up the calibration and kind of the offsets and everything like that. I really didn't do that um, because I'm not really using the camera all that much. I found it a little bit too, resolution, uh, too low resolution to kind of line things up perfectly, but you absolutely can go through and calibrate it and get that working a little bit better if you want. Secondly, you've got the air assist. You need to make sure that you enable the air assist so that will actually allow it to turn on and off the air assist on the machine with the code so you can kind of select, oh, if I'm doing a cut or an engraving. Uh, the thing about this machine is it doesn't have a way to adjust the air assist. It's just kind of binary. It's just on or off. And I've kind of found that with several of the other machines out there. I've got the P2 sitting over here. It's the same way. However, on the GWIC, it does actually have a little knob on the gantry where you can adjust it like that, which is kind of nice. And the last thing that you're going to want to enable is the autofocus feature. Now, I'm going to be talking about this next, so I won't get too into it, but this machine does have autofocus, it will basically focus the head based on the offset of the material. So you need to enable that so that when you send a program to the machine, it can actually focus the head properly. Okay, so let's talk about autofocus. Autofocus is one of the most frustrating features of this machine because they overdid it but it end up not being the thing that you want. So on the machine, you have to focus the laser right at the point that you're cutting or engraving, and it does have a motorized head. It has a little tiny stepper motor in there, and it can actually adjust the head for the proper focal length. Well, how does it determine that proper focal length? Well, in Lightburn or other softwares, you actually apply it as an offset. So it basically kind of knows where the base of the honeycomb bed is. And so if you want to do a three millimeter piece of material, you kind of have to do the math of like 17 minus three, oh, that equals 14. And then you type in an offset of 14. It's kind of strange. Uh, you don't just say, oh, I want, you know, two millimeter thick material thickness or one. You kind of have to do this offset by this predefined length that it's already at. It's really confusing. If this sounds confusing, it is. I think once you get used to it and you kind of know how the machine works, you're totally fine. But it is a bit of a weird thing. In their software, which I don't really use, it's set up for scanning QR codes on the actual material. <clears throat> and they copied this terrible, terrible idea from Glowforge. Glowforge wants you to use their consumables so that you rebuy their consumables and they have a little QR code on the bottom of the material and it uses the laser or the camera to scan that QR code and say, oh, this is two millimeters and then it applies that offset. So it's not really autofocus as much as a camera-based system to read a QR code and apply an offset. If they had just skipped all that software development and just had a little probe that either touched off of the workpiece or had like some sort of laser rangefinder to say, oh, that is you know three millimeters away from the head or whatever it is, and apply that in software, that would have been fantastic. So it's not really autofocus in the way that you'd maybe traditionally think. However, in Lightburn and some other softwares, you can actually just apply an offset as a value, hit autofocus, and you're golden. You don't need to physically, you know, adjust the bed or adjust the laser head each time. So that is just kind of a little bit of a gripe that I had. 
And the last thing that I will say is that you can set up material profiles. So if you're cutting a lot of three millimeter or six millimeter, you know, whatever you're cutting, you can set these up as material profiles and then assign that as that offset in there. So you don't necessarily have to manually adjust it every single time. So just something to take note of. So I wanted to briefly go over the rotary axis setup that comes with this machine. I'm not a big rotary guy. I don't really do anything with it, so I'm not gonna be the right one to explain all this to you since I'm just not that familiar, but at least explain what comes with the machine. So it comes with these two different pieces and they're labeled one and two. And at first glance, I thought they're exactly the same, but there's only one difference. It is the spacing between the rollers. So you've got the larger spacing and then the smaller spacing. So it's for different diameter uh, work pieces. And you've got a very simple little like kind of scissor lift mechanism over here. And then this adjusts and slides in and out. So yeah, pretty simple stuff. I thought it was really interesting though, the redundancy here. Um, I don't know why you couldn't just make these and these adjustable, I guess because of you know, the belt drive system in here, maybe that'd be a little bit more complicated. It just seems weird that they would have two fully um, different ones. And the numbers, the one and the two correspond to gantry location. So you basically move the gantry to a fixed position and then flip the switch, connect these in, and there you go. And they kind of fit into this recess that is in the bottom where the, um, you remove the honeycomb, fit into the recess, and there you go. So if you're into rotary stuff, um, it's nice. I won't say that this is anything too special. You know, it's just kind of a little bit, once again, utilitarian coming from GWIC. It will absolutely get the job done. It just, the fit and the finish and the actual usability could be a little bit nicer. Like it just seems you know, kind of interesting. Like they just kind of cobbled together a rotary axis. But I, I really have no idea what other rotary axis setups look like. I'm sure this would get the job done and it would be perfectly fine. The fact that you have this adjustment means that you can do perfectly cylindrical objects or by raising this up, you can do um, what tapered cylindrical objects right to where one side is higher than the other. So I think everything is good. It gets the job done. It just eh, maybe seems a little bit, you know, utilitarian in its design. Okay, so let's talk about product comparison. At this time, I'm currently reviewing the Xtool P2, which is sitting right here off camera. I have the GWIC, and over there I have kind of a industrial 60 watt laser. It's like an older style. And um, in the comments for the P2 videos and the GWIC videos, I get a lot of comments of people kind of asking, you know, which one to buy. So I wanna take this time to kind of talk about the differences between these. So let's first talk about the difference between like the industrial, like think of the red and black. Um, if you look on eBay and some other places, I think like Ohm Tech makes a lot of these, just kind of the big old boxy 60 watt traditional style lasers. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but they're different product segments. Something like this is considered more of a desktop laser. So it has the air assist built in, has the water cooling built in, the exhaust built in. It's kind of all in one. The more industrial machines are a little bit more modular. And if you look at my video that I made, a while back for like the stand of my machine, I have the separate chiller at the bottom, I have like an air exhaust and I have a separate air pump. It's all kind of separate stuff and there are pros and cons to that. Um, I think ultimately the cons is it just takes up a lot more space. If you're only using a laser occasionally, something like a desktop laser machine makes a lot more sense. If you don't have the room for it, if you're using it in an apartment, there's a lot of reasons that you're going to know instantly why a desktop makes more sense versus having like this kind of big, chunky, bulky thing. Um, also, those older style lasers don't have the smart features. They don't typically have the camera. They're not like, you know, as integrated. Everything's just kind of a little bit more a la carte, if you will. So they're all kind of like separate pieces. So that's the main difference um, in terms of actual laser performance, in terms of actually getting it to cut and engrave. All of these are gonna be very, very similar to one another. Uh, they're all gonna have very similar optics, very similar laser tubes, very similar laser power supplies. The controllers are getting a little bit better. Um, I think if you're gonna be using it for very complicated tasks, maybe something like an industrial is gonna make more sense. But if you're using it the way that the promotional material shows, like if you watch, the videos for the GWIC cloud or watch the videos for the P2 and you're like, oh, I'm making little, you know, hand cut Christmas ornaments and stuff. This is 
maybe going to be more your segment. Just, you know, kind of see which one feels more right for you. You're going to know if you're more in the market for the industrial laser. So enough said about that. Let's talk about the Ohm Tech Polar versus the GWIC Cloud. They're practically the exact same thing. I've seen a few videos where people are pointing out some subtle nuance differences between them, but I think at the end of the day, they're basically the same machine and they're made by one of the two. Either Ohm Tech makes both of these or GWIC makes both of these, who knows, but they're basically a rebranded version of the exact same machine. Um, let's talk about this compared directly to the X-Tool uh, P2, because I think that's kind of a more interesting comparison because whenever I review a product, and I always say this, is I always try and find out who the audience is and does it have an audience. And I think the GWIC has an audience, I think the Industrial Laser has an audience, and I think the P2 X-Tool P2 has an audience as well. And looking down at my notes here, so, with the GWIC, the fit and the finish is just a bit more industrial, a little bit more utilitarian, and it's just kind of get it done. Uh, GWIC is more of an industrial company. They make larger industrial lasers, and this is their foray into the more consumer market. So the fact that it's all metal and glass is kind of showing of that. The thing shows up in a plywood crate you know it's just a bit more of an industrial machine and so it's missing some of those maybe plasticky fit and finish touches that make it feel a little bit more special or stylish or you know appley so that's something to kind of keep in mind the camera is a bit disappointing on the gwic as compared to the p2 the p2 the dual camera system really feels usable for me for this i was like Eh, I kind of put it a slightly more in that gimmicky category. I'm not saying it's a gimmick, but it's a little bit more in the gimmick category. Whereas with the P2, I actually rely on it. On my traditional laser, I have the control pad and I can jog the head around and move it. I'm not doing that on the P2. I'm actually using the camera system. But on this, it has a little bit too much of a lag. The resolution isn't quite there. And so it's, I'm kind of picking or choosing how I want to do it. I'm not defaulting to the camera. Um, the other thing, actual laser performance between the P2 and the GWIC, it's going to be nearly identical. I do understand that the P2 has an extra 5 watts worth of laser power. That's great. Um, they're, both, they're both boasting some high you know, engraving speeds, whatever. You're probably not going to really be honestly using it that much. You're not going to be just racing through. You're going to get a little bit of artifacts. You're going to want to slow things down. So in terms of speed, in terms of power, they're virtually identical, virtually identical. The P2 does have more power, but with CO2 lasers, you're not just running 100% power all the time. That will actually degrade the tubes. You're not supposed to run CO2s at max power all the time. So yeah, you have a little bit more headroom, not a huge issue. Exhaust, air assist, um, everything else is pretty much the same between these two. I didn't really find any major differences. They both do the same thing. I really, really like the GWIC air filter, the external accessory. I think if I was gonna get either of these machines, I would probably end up with the GWIC air filter regardless of what I got. So that's kind of nice. The GWIC does have that adjustment on the air assist, which is kind of cool. You could probably hack into the P2 and just put a little needle valve in there as well, but it doesn't technically have any adjustment on the air assist. I never adjust the air assist on mine, so just for what it's worth. And I guess finally, they're both very good with light burn. Um, if you're using an external program like light burn, they both operate pretty much the same way. The biggest difference is the P2 has its own software, which unlocks a lot of really cool features that aren't available in light burn, that aren't available with any other laser, um, like the auto feed, the batch processing with, you know, being able to kind of mirror the image across multiple things just by laying down some stuff on the bed and saying, oh, I'm going to do it here, 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 here. Um, that's pretty cool. And also the curved surface engraving. All of those are cool features that the GWIC, you know, just absolutely doesn't have and Lightburn doesn't have. And in using the X-Tool software, it's actually pretty nice. I haven't used the X-Tool with Lightburn yet because Eh, the software does the things that I want it to do. For more advanced things, I'd probably turn to Lightbird. So I'm going to put this as a chapter right here. Welcome to this chapter. In summary, I think the GWIC presents a better value overall. It is significantly cheaper than the P2. 
I think comparing it to the industrial lasers and comparing it to some other things like that is problematic because it's just a completely different. It's an all-in-one desktop solution, so it's just a bit different. Compared directly with the P2, it's a better value just because it's cheaper and ultimately it does kind of the same thing at the end of the day, but the P2 is larger, fancier, fit and finish is just kind of nicer. It operates better, it has a little bit less lag with the camera system. It's just a bit of a more refined and polished machine. However, on the other side, the GWIC does kind of have a little bit better build quality in some cases. The linear rail system on this is just nicer. Um, the metal enclosure versus the plastic enclosure. So I think both of them have a really good position in the market. The GWIC is going to be more of your budget-minded machine. If you want a desktop laser but can't justify the extra features of the P2, this is a good choice. If all of the extra cool features of the P2 are things that you are just dying for and have been looking for, then the P2 is a good choice. But I think they both fit the market quite well. Okay, so how do we wrap up the GWIC Cloud? If I had to use a single sentence, I think it would be, it's a great machine, but needs a little bit of refinement. I think that's kind of how I see it, is it's a really good all-in-one desktop laser machine that's kind of a good value, um, but it needs a little bit of refinement. The camera's a little bit slow to respond. The software is really clunky. You're gonna wanna use something like Lightburn. However, the guts of it are really good. You have a nice solid metal enclosure that's very rigid, very sturdy. You have a really good linear bearing guide setup. You have good optics, good laser tube, and a good controller that integrates in with other software like Lightburn. So all the guts are there. It just misses some of those refinement features that are kind of defining this smart CO2 laser segment, right? So something like a Glowforge or a P2 have these more bells and whistles. The GWIC is really not as good at the bells and whistles, and the bells and whistles kind of come across a little bit more like a gimmick. However, it kind of acts a little bit more like the traditional 60 watt CO2 laser machines, just kind of condensed down into the form factor of a desktop machine. So that's kind of how I'm seeing it, is if you really don't want that big bulky industrial laser and you want everything kind of shrunk down, you want the chiller, the air assist, and the exhaust all built into one small unit, that's basically what the GWIC is. Something like a uh, Glowforge or the Xtool P2 is kind of a little bit more of a different segment. This is like the crossover, right? This is the truck and the car. This is the crossover, whereas the P2 and the Glowforge are kind of more the car segment. They're not really trucks if any of that analogy makes sense. So I really do like this machine. I don't hesitate recommending this to anyone if the extra features of the P2 are not interesting to you at all, and you just kind of want maybe a more simple industrial machine that's a little bit more all-in-one, I think the GWIC fits that build. So as always, let me know if you have any questions down below. Feel free. Um, I will answer anything that I can regarding this and the other lasers that I've got. So hopefully that gives you a little bit better idea of what these machines are. And as always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.